Good afternoon. From the NASDAQ market site overlooking Times Square, I'm Brad Smith. The future of artificial intelligence is an ongoing conversation that we track and engage with here at NASDAQ, especially as worldwide spending on cognitive and artificial intelligence systems is predicted to increase by 59.3% year over year to reach $12.5 billion by the end of 2017, as revealed in an IDC spending guide. So today, to discuss that further, we're joined by Gotham Sastry, who is the president and CEO at iSensium. Gotham, great to see you again. Well, thank you very much for uh, having me back. Absolutely. So let's dive in. Uh, when, we, when we think about um, social in particular, where we're tracking and integrating some of the artificial intelligence, as, as you've already been doing so well, what's more important? Is it the quality or is it the quantity? It's two different types of people. Uh, I think the quality issue uh, will evolve quite rapidly. Mm -hmm. But uh, the question that I would pose is, you can have the smartest intelligence on the planet, but what if you can't feed it? And uh, I brought a prop okay. uh, because people are astounded. And uh, this is actually two full days of tick data generated by both the exchanges. Wow. I paid 700 bucks for it on Amazon. <laughs> uh, but ironically, it's only four seconds of Twitter. Oh, my gosh. And Twitter is not even one of the huge platforms. Uh, so imagine what would happen if you added video mm -hmm. uh, and 3D and voice and photos and everything else. Right. Uh, this becomes a molecule. It would be too small for me to hold. Right. So uh, the evolution of quality uh, is being driven by quantity at rates that I don't think people are able to imagine. Hmm. So they dismiss it as alternate data. Uh, but it's not because it's most of the data and it hasn't been looked at. Right. Now, how have you seen artificial intelligence touch social media so far? Well, uh, it's touched social media and very uh, consumer-related stuff, you know. Uh, there was a joke that Bezos said, Alexa, buy me Whole Foods, and, uh, <laughs> you know. You and it had, happened. Yeah, it did. <laughs> and there was no, uh, I, I was surprised. We usually catch these things. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, intelligent cars. Uh, so artificial intelligence is used at a lower level. Uh, it hasn't yet proven itself to be valuable in finding edge, uh, which is the art of making money, uh, but that's a much more complex mm -hmm. thing than barking out orders. So how does this translate then? What's the significant significance for the markets in particular? Well, uh, the markets want uh, to get uh, a heads up mm -hmm. that something's the beginning of a trend. Sure. And uh, let's just call it contagion, mm -hmm. okay? So you have one Galaxy Note 7 blowing up, no big deal, right? Then you have 10, right? and somebody notices. And then the whole thing literally blows up. Yeah. And it's the end of the brand. And then you see an organization, you know, like airlines now saying that these devices are banned. That adds on to the conversation. Yeah. You also have uh, all kinds of things like the Chipotle E. coli outbreak. Mm -hmm. uh, and the strange thing is that nobody actually cared about the Wells Fargo crisis where they're opening really? uh, you know, fake accounts. Uh, and nobody really cared about the Lockheed Martin uh, tweet by our president. So some things catch fire and become contagious. Others uh, just are a flash in the pan and nobody remembers them. Mm -hmm. So it takes quite a diverse range of talents, including artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and data processing, uh, and being able to get to the right sources uh, to get a big picture of uh, whether the barbarian hordes are invading or uh, 
uh, whether it's just a small peasant rebellion or whatever it is. Right. You know, as a historian, I'm using historical terms, but I hope I'm conveying uh, the relevance sure. of quality of observance mm -hmm. and volume of stuff to observe. Right. So what type of volume, and if there's an average or a benchmark level that you've seen has to be hit to make an impact? Because there are times where, as you say, there could be something going on around Wells Fargo. There may not be a whole lot of social pickup, but everybody has heard of it. So what's that benchmark? What's that level where everybody, it's, it's now become a viral conversation that's taking place? Well, uh, the vir there's two types of... Uh uses of artificial intelligence mm -hmm. uh, in the context of trading the markets. Okay. Uh, one is event driven. So uh, something happened and uh, you have about five milliseconds to put on a trade. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of a specialist thing in my view because you can't sort of unroll a pension fund based on uh, an event. Yeah. Uh, the thing that we specialize in, which is more complex, is telling you long before it becomes visible that something happened and is spreading. Mm -hmm. uh, think about it as momentum of sentiment as extracted through data processing combined with artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And making those two types of people work together is a huge management challenge. One is thinking along axis X, the other is on axis Y. Uh, but if we don't merge those things into something consumers can digest, whether they're institutions or retailers, uh, we'll have a problem, which is why I'm excited about partnering with NASDAQ. You're the network. We want to add more value to it in the form of intelligent observation of what's likely to affect you uh, in the near to this, uh, mid future. Absolutely. Are, are companies doing enough right now to ensure that they're setting up the infrastructure internally to be able to digest, harness so much of this information that, that's coming through via artificial intelligence? Well, uh, I remember the days, 84, when I first got on DARPAnet, when uh, your storage system to put all the data in was about 100,000 times faster than the network to which you're connected. Sure. Well, uh, Facebook just uh, open sourced their entire 100 gigabit switching architecture. Uh, and we are now in a situation where the network is so much faster than any storage medium that uh, the Snap IPO, they already spent all $3 billion of their raise, but it's supposed to be ephemeral. Mm. Right, and 92% of Amazon's revenue uh, profits come from cloud services. So it's flipped on its head. The network has been commoditized and uh, storage has become a black hole because by the time you put stuff in, pull it out and look at it, it's obsolete. Right. There's 25 trillion terabytes per second of stuff. I don't even know if I can call it data. It's yeah. stuff, stuff, right? You have stuff, data, and actionable intelligence. Sure. We don't even know how much of it is just stuff. So uh, there's a lot of ongoing miscalculations uh, about what's going to cost how much. Right. Uh, including on my own part, uh, there have been painful learning curves, uh, but we've gotten through most of them. Uh, we're able to process, you know, 2,000 messages per second with a monthly AWS bill of $25,000. Wow. That bill was $300,000 a month six months ago. Uh, so, you know, it, it can go out of control real fast. Right. So, so uh, qu uh, quantity is constrained by your wallet. Huh. And okay. quality is constrained by your imagination. You know, two different axes. Definitely. So when we think about 5, 10, 15 even, years out from now, and in terms of artificial intelligence, how we're leveraging it right now and, and just scratching the surface, and in the future, where do we see that really playing the next major role? How are we going to be harnessing 
even more data that we don't even know if it's actionable data or if it's just stuff. Are we going to have that grasp in the future and have that ability to really take in? This is the data I need to make sure that at the end of the day I can turn a profit, a revenue out of what my business is putting out there to the general consumer. Well, uh, I think that uh, people are going to communicate uh, like humans observe, which is you're essentially you know, assimilating things in real time. I can see you. I can see all the screens. I have a general contextual awareness of what's going on. But that's a heck of a lot of data to digitize and transmit. Right. Uh, so I think people will be wired into machines that observe everything around them, mm. uh, which are constantly transmitting stuff. Uh, and we don't know what part of that stuff is legal or not. Uh, I, I thought I'd throw that in from a uh, societal concern <laughs> perspective as sure. a father of two young kids. Yeah. So uh, we will have to analyze it probably within the device. Uh, and the trend has already begun because I read yesterday that uh, Crown Castle, which owns more cell towers uh, than anybody else in the U.S., just funded a startup to put data centers next to the, next to the cell towers. Oh, wow. Right, so you you want to push the analysis of what's being created mm -hmm. as far out. Uh, so you need really smart AI. You need really smart math. You need really fast chips, and uh, energy efficiency is critical. Uh, so uh, it's all you won't hear about data centers ten years from now. Uh, except as artifacts of archaeology. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's where I think things are going, and uh, it's supported by what's happened since the inception of the Internet. Right. Uh, you know, DARPAnet originally. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gone to 25 terabytes per second and growing 38% exponentially. Definitely. So when we think about this holistic landscape, how does Icentium fit into that broader picture as well? Well, uh, we want to solve small problems. Okay. You know, it begins with what are people saying. And we wanted to, uh, we want to present what we found as objective reporters in a format that subject matter experts would comprehend. Sure. So uh, if you're in the stock market, you like to see something that resembles a stock tick, mm -hmm. but it's a sentiment tick. Uh, but we use things like moving averages. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to invent math that already works and ex has existed. Uh, if you're in the pharmaceutical business, it probably requires some different way of presenting efficacy. Uh, if you're in the surveillance business, uh, you know, all these uh, internal networks, uh, Symphony, uh, Slack, mm -hmm. Uh, those are the internet problems of tomorrow. You don't know who's offside. We've already seen on Bloomberg a couple of stories about uh, people having their phones taken away and they look at their WhatsApp and uh, they're offside, right? right? So uh, it's concentric rings uh, which become increasingly inward looking. We've actually been asked to build Net sentiment switches mm -hmm. and deploy them inside institutions. Wow. Uh, so uh, without being too verbose, one of the world's largest pharmaceutical uh, companies has found that 75% of medical research cannot be reproduced in the lab. Hmm. What are the implications of that? Right. Uh, New Jersey's pension fund is only funded to 48% of liabilities. What are the implications of that? You know, it's, a que it's not a question of whether AI and edge is required. Yeah. It's where do you begin? Uh, we began with the stock market uh, because there's a deterministic and objective metric called price that gets printed by the exchanges. And there's a price discovery mechanism that people trust. Mm -hmm. That does not exist in the larger world of social media where over a hundred billion dollars a year are spent on advertising 
while the advertisers don't know what's actually beneath. Right. So uh, you know we're focused, but expanding uh, very sort of uh, aggressively uh, towards where the problems that need to be solved are. Absolutely. Well, great to have you here. Discuss a little bit of the future of artificial intelligence, how you're approaching that from the iSentium side. And again, great to see you again here at NASDAQ Market Site here in Times Square. Great to be here. Definitely. And thank you all for watching live on Facebook. Stay tuned for more coming right here from the NASDAQ Market Site in Times Square.